Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. What up, my picker? This picker's crazy. That's one crazy picker. Picker, get out my face. How about this? Terrence Crawford, that's his new nickname. The Picker. Cherry Picker. I don't know what's going on with Terrence Crawford. Some people are saying that's a good move for him to fight Chris Eubank Jr. Bubble up two weight classes, get your feet wet, see how you feel at 160. Excuse me, then from there, see what Canelo's doing and maybe make a super fight between Crawford and Canelo. But let me tell you this, right? I, I think it does kind of make sense to test the waters at a weight where you're comfortable. Um, before jumping up three weight divisions, bubble up two, getting there, mixing up with a guy like Eubank Jr., who to me is no threat, and that's why I'm saying Terrence Crawford is my picker. You know what I'm saying? I don't really think he's one of them the most crazy picker I ever met. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, what's this picker gonna do next? Fighting a guy like Eubank Jr. Look, Bo Mac already knows everything about Eubank Jr. So they got the inside scoop. I heard one, you know, toadstool arguing with me, right? I mean, I'm talking about a very intense discussion was taking place. And all I kept saying is you're taking it to the stupid. I mean, he didn't have a comeback. He got frustrated. So as long as that picket didn't get crazy, we're good. But he feels that Bomack would be in Chris Eubank Jr.'s corner over Terrence Crawford. Now to that I say, to anyone who feels that, and I say this in the most respectful way that I kind of request that you hold your horses and stop taking it to the stupid picker. Now look, Ter uh, you, I'm talking, I'm taking it to the stupid. Bo Mack is not going to leave Terrence Crawford's side. That's his picker. Matter of fact, they've been down for years. You know what I'm saying? Them pickers go way back. So, so I don't want to hear this crap about Bo Mack is going to be with, um, Eubank Jr., hell, he just met that picker. You know what I'm saying? He don't really know that picker. He said he's been working with that picker for what, a couple months. So all your pickers can get out of here with that crazy talk. But that's a cherry pick for Terrence Crawford. He, Eubank Jr. brings nothing to the table except for a name and money. Simple. He, he, he stuck with those tendencies of doing what Roy Jones had him doing for all those years. He got away from being the beast that his father created him that his father created in him. If he was still with his dad, I would say Terrence Crawford, that's a bad choice. But he's not with his dad anymore. He, 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 and then he worked with Bo Mack to, 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 to make a few corrections, but really, Eubank Jr. and him getting that win over um, Liam Smith was, was a result of Liam Smith having to melt down 30, 40 pounds in a short period of time. So he, he was he was he was drained, man. And that's just being honest. So I just don't think that there's anything Eubank Jr. brings to the table that's gonna cause any issues for a guy like Terrence Crawford. Simple. Now y'all pickers may think I'm crazy because I'm saying Terrence Crawford bubbling up two weight divisions isn't gonna pose a problem for him. But I, I put it to you this way. When Eubank Jr. fought Liam, I think it's Liam, right? Yeah, he fought Liam Smith in the first fight. Eubank Jr. looked really good. But in those rounds where he looked good, you know, the fight didn't last long, uh, Liam Smith was still touching him. He was still hitting him because Eubank Jr. was standing right in front of him. And Eubank Jr., when he fought Liam Smith the second time, he was still standing in front of him, just Liam Smith wasn't letting his hands go because he couldn't. Let me tell you, Eubank Jr. fighting Terrence Crawford, he's going to get knocked out. I think it's going to be a vicious, frightening knockout, and I think it's going to be some shit like Amir Khan. Amir Khan just, he took the Usyk route and claimed he got hit in his balls, and his balls were up on his chest just like Usyk, and Amir Khan was able to dodge the bullet. <clears throat> oh, but it was coming. But let me let me pull something up and show you, right? This is, this is, this is what I'm looking at. <sighs> because... I just don't, I don't think uh, Eubank Jr. stands a chance against Terrence Crawford, man, at all. 
I don't think Terrence Crawford and bubbling up the, to 160, I don't think nothing's going to slow him down. I think Crawford's just going to go in there and tranquilize him. Um, I think he's going to tranquilize him. Y'all going to see. And nobody's going to really give Crawford the credit because Eubank Jr., he's just not hes just not that guy in my opinion. So let's, let's take a look at something here. Okay, but I like to do these comparisons to put these in perspective. So, so when you look here, and don't get me wrong, I like Eubank Jr. I really do. Thirty-three wins, twenty-four kills, three losses, one loss by KO. That was to Liam Smith, right? Seventy-two percent KO ratio. His reach is seventy-two inches. He's five eleven. Okay, now that matters. Okay, that matters. Reach seventy-two and a half inches. He stands five eleven. All right, now he can fight, but I just don't think he messes with Crawford. Now let's see what we got for Terrence Crawford, okay? So Terrence Crawford. Now let's see what we have for Terrence Crawford. Right here, bud. That's my picker. Now look at Terrence Crawford. 40 wins, 31 by KO, 77% KO ratio. He says 5'8", but his reach is longer than Eubank Jr. His reach is 74 inches. That's crazy. Okay? So, for people who are thinking that Terrence Crawford is at some kind of disadvantage, because you look at, you know, Eubank Jr. being taller, you know, actually having to cut all the way down to 160 um, and coming into the ring probably heavier, I just don't think that's going to be an issue for a guy like Terrence Crawford. Because at the end of, end of the day, skills pay the bills. And when Crawford, if he's fighting orthodox and he's like, hey, this isn't working out, all he's going to do is go into the phone booth, turn into Southpaw Man, and come out there, and within one or two rounds, the fight ends anyway. So, I mean, by now, y'all should know what that picker does, man. It, it, nobody should be going against Terrence Crawford, man. You know, that picker stands on business. He gets busy. He's super disciplined, and he's just, you know, he's just that picker. That being said, y'all get over the bull crap. Terrence Crawford may lose to Chris Eubank Jr., this right here is a cherry pick, man. But, you know, in my opinion, it's a smart cherry pick because of getting a guy who has a name. Um, Crawford should get some credit for beating him because of how the, the win Eubank Jr. just came off of how he won that fight. But also, you look at the fact that Bo Mack knows Chris Eubank Jr. Um, and you better believe Bo Mack's going to make sure all of whatever flaws that he recognized in Eubank Jr. and he tried to fix and those things that weren't corrected, yeah, he and Crawford are going to sit there and converge, okay? That's pretty simple. Now, when you take a look at, let me show you something before I get the hell out of here. When you take a look at this right here, let me, uh, let me make this a little bit smaller for you. So this is Terrence Crawford, and this is what he's dealing with at 147. You know, we keep talking about it. We know Terrence Crawford not messing with none of these guys. He has no interest in fighting any of these guys right here at 147. No Spence. No, well, that all fell apart. No Ennis, Santiago, Crowley, Vanessi, and Via, uh, Cavaliaskis, Rocha, Barrios, Giasov. He's not thinking about them. So you come up to 154. It looks like he may try to get in there with Zou, the winner of Zoo and Keith Thurman. But he needs, a, he needs a stay busy fight, right? So he goes up now and he's like, you know what, let me just go on up here and take a fight at 160. And when you look at what's going on at 160 pounds, you look at the names, Alan Canuli, Adamus, you know, those, those guys may be a little bit much for Terrence Crawford right now, but who knows, Terrence Crawford, he may be able to pull off the upset, but Alan Canuli is no joke. Adamus is no joke, especially the first five rounds. Uh, Arizlandi Lara, you know, I don't know what's going on with that guy. I think he achieved the American dream, like his nickname says, and he ain't trying to, he's not trying to get back in that ring. You got Eubank Jr. There's some money there. There's a Saudi connect there. Terrence Crawford, whether you like it or not, he's got the Saudi connect. He can go out there and make the kind of money he wants. All right? And the rest of these guys at 160 pounds, they don't even make any sense to even d d talk about Crawford fighting these guys because they can't, they can't bring the kind of money to the table that Crawford's looking for. Now, if he can get through, um, get through Eubank Jr., then you start looking at what we got here at uh, 168 pounds. I, I I just think him fighting on gear, I think Crawford gets I think Crawford gets decimated. Him fighting Benavides, I think Crawford gets decimated. And Billy, I think Crawford gets the hell beat out of him. 
I just think Crawford going up to 168 and messing with any of these guys who are natural 168 pounders who really walk around at like close to 200 and can fight. I think Crawford gets in over his head. No matter how talented he is, they got weight divisions for a reason. Um, and even Crawford knows that. So nobody should take offense to what I'm saying. Bottom line is, when it comes to Terrence Crawford, this is the right pick. And it is a cherry pick, but it's a cherry pick for all the right reasons. There's a person with a name, winning record, looked good in his last fight. Uh, he has the name. Uh, he has a connection to Saudi. And he can get the big money payday that he wants. That's all this is about right now, people. So people are going to hate on Crawford, but I don't think you should. But I do think it's fair to call him a cherry picker. I do, because that's just what this is. But it's not a cherry pick for an easy win. It's a cherry pick for... Uh, to, to be in a winnable situation when it comes to winning the fight, when it comes to maybe possibly winning fans, uh, winning some credibility from bu bubbling up two weight classes, but also most importantly to Terrence Crawford right now is to get that goddamn $20, $25, $30 million payday if decided to pay him that, which I think he may get it. That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans, all seven continents, to all my pickers around the world. What up? It's Terrence Crawford is out here. Cherry picking. Y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze.